<coughs> Hello, uh, this is a uh, part two. I, I forgot to add some uh, points I wanted to make in previous video, TI story I call it. Um, what's your TI story? Uh, this is mine. Um, I've, I've got a list of uh, extra points I'd like to cover quickly that I forgot in my last video. Uh, so I've wrote a laundry list. Okay, um, I was speaking about her methods and experience I had that I wanted to share and also connecting the dots from where that activity is coming from and like I previously said I've trod on the toes of the people that target in different areas I've encountered targeting in many places where I've um, encountered opposition and as a consequence they send the hounds on to you so it's happened in the various throughout my life there's been various occasions where it's brought about this uh, reaction and that's when you're close to the nest I'm going to call this video hashtag the nest because it's a an organized group of body of people that you utilize this technique and like crooks for hire or you know through their methodology through their shadow arms through their little uh, setups and leadership positions they have people in and they can pull the chains and and uh, operate freely under the noses of the law um, and, and in even cases being given permission by the law or people in the law that turn a blind eye to it or just so gullible that they go along with the flow they go along with what they're told I want to give one example of um, how 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 they can dispose of you and try and mop up and make it you know without any like a dustpan just dustpan and brush your life away airbrush you out of existence and how this how this can be done and uh, um, an encounter I had that uh, wouldn't have happened in everyday life it just it was made it was um, set up to happen the way it happened now it was a few years ago I just um, when I was a young Christian I fell into the trap of finding a church place I could meet and I didn't really know much about the scriptures I had a testimony of Christ but I didn't really have a testimony of that there was a true church as such so I got caught out by these lies from the Mormon church who uh, on investigation lied and the internet wasn't available there then to check out what they were teaching they just basically agreed with what with my testimony and got me in the door and when I got in the door I realised you know I started to realise it was wrong well subsequently I left and I stood against it and uh, because it's a criminal because they're criminals because they lie under oath and they swear oaths above their allegiance to their church and their leadership above anything else so you know that's uh, a that's secretive although they say it's in the name of good it, it's still de it's deceptive and it lies and they lie so it's a deceptive organization a big organization a big cult which has been going for hundreds of years, nearly 200 years. And investigating it since then, I discovered all, you know, how they operate, who they're involved with, and I joined up the dots. Anyway, I was challenging them, and I was challenging their leadership authority, and... Uh, you know, letting them have a piece of my mind and and basically telling them they were wrong and then showing them that they were wrong and showing them that they were liars by what, what the Holy Bible says. Uh, shortly after this event I was visiting a friend and um, 
I was parking to pull into the, where they lived. They lived in a caravan park. And I was, it was on a main road, very busy road. And the spot where you, I was turning right and the spot where I was turning there's a big entrance to a, a lorry depot. So the lorries can do a U-turn in this entrance. So there's plenty of room to go around anyone pulled over to the right turning. Uh, and I was indicating and I could see this car coming up behind me in the wing mirror and I could see, I could see the oncoming traffic as well and I could see the speed of this car approaching because it came in my wing mirror like that it was it, it was over 40 miles an hour it was, I could hear the engine it was on full throttle at least third gear and it was a, uh, a little 1600 Peugeot with this, with this lady in it and she said she claimed she didn't see anything and she just hit me and I had to think really quickly to let off my brake and try and relax you know just to take the impact and I was on full lock ready to turn into this turning because it's a very you know people speed along this road so I had to you know I was ready to go uh, well after the impact I had to put you know I had to put um, quite a bit of touch of brake on because there's oncoming cars and I was going to free course into the oncoming traffic so I kind of stiffened up and that caused some very serious injury consequently the police were just around the corner and uh, instead of investigating the accident they, they rifled my car they weren't even concerned about me or anything they just rifled my car and, and, and basically uh, filled out the accident without looking at the accident and I didn't realise till I got home that they'd, they'd, they'd written 10 miles an hour and so they completely covered up any injury I didn't get I, I didn't get treated by the ambulance driver I was in shock I was in a you know a r rushing with adrenaline and uh, you know I was left there on the scene I was left to drive my, my car was a write off both cars were right, written off and all the police was in threat the police I knew the police were, were bent because he was like, both of them, a man and a woman, they were just both hard and cold and evil. And, uh, all he, you know, the, he tried to stuff it down my throat, make sure you phone the insurance details, you know, to just to get me into that, uh, tossing and turning, between, fighting for that, you know. And I couldn't fight for that once I realised that, you know, there's a falsified report. And then challenging it, it just falls on deaf ears. So I didn't get any hospital treatment and uh, they were there beforehand so I started to you know uh, join the dots up and uh, I personally believe that was a uh, and another thing is that the, my uncle was in hospital and co you know coincidentally it, that that accident was arranged I believe outside where he worked because that's I was visiting someone right opposite that who would have known my movements and would have known uh, to play that because um, in satanic sort of uh, um, theatre scenes they like to show you that they got power and they can make events happen that 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 you can't you can't prove there's kind of a like a, a coincidence a magic coincidence to it uh, the lady who come out to see if I was alright from running out of the, the factory happened to say uh, something about my uncle to me and I said uh, that's my uncle you know and I was going to visit him in hospital that night so that, I thought that you know that's a bit uncanny that she you know she mentioned my uncle and I was right opposite out where he worked nobody knew that was, there's was nothing to do, you know, what I was doing was nothing to do with my uncle dying in hospital with cancer. So that was like them trying to let me know, I believe. And then the accident, then the police were just round the corner. Now, the, poli the police that were called to the accident arrived. And the two that turned up on the scene just ran straight away, pulled out of the close round the corner and down the road. So when, when the police that were called raced to the scene 
they told that they outranked them and just moved them on and they just sat up back up the road having a tea you know cup of tea and some donuts on the side of the road watching because they'd been done out of a job so this that was a that's a military MA that is to 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 take over the scene have two bent coppers in it and cover up the accident so when I then I go to get help from doctors they just close the door they don't want to know they just they, they treat you like a whiplash you know I actually applied for uh, yeah my doctor you know said oh, oh we can't afford to p treat you you'll have to apply for you know treatment so I applied for treatment and I applied for the money to to have a proper consultation and uh, an examination to see if I had any internal injuries and I qualified for the money and the person, the qualified person to provide that service. So I paid for it out of the money I'd qualified, but when I went for the service, that person wasn't there. It was a physiotherapist who out of their mouth said, oh, I can give you six weeks of treatment before she'd even examined me. So I, I said, oh, you haven't looked at me yet and you, you've just planned six weeks and spent all my money and 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 whatever you're gonna write is gonna go, and that's exactly what happened. They they just write down whatever they like on the report, and that's up to you to challenge it. And if you don't challenge it, that stays on your record. And then you challenge your record. I've challenged my medical documents because they're false and they've got falsified information on them. And I know where the proof is to show that on their own records where there's contradictory evidence. So. I challenged it and said I want my um, I want that removed and righted, and then I get the cold shoulder, you know. So I, ha I have to go and get legal help and challenge them that way. And that's something I'm not going to do because I've got a hundred and one things like that to chase up these people. So uh, this is um, kind of how things can be controlled, how things can be manipulated, how doors can be shut down, how you and, and, and that could be just by general the way the world's set up and they're apathetic, they don't want to get involved. And these this can close the door on this kind of activity and that can be relied on, oh you know, that we know that that's it's you know, it's gonna get brushed away because uh we put so much pressure on these um NHS services they can't possibly cope so they're just gonna brush it away you know especially when it's whiplash and when you get a load of false people claiming for whiplash they, you know doctors don't want the burden of dealing with these claims so that closes the door and that's relied on that, that that's like a sponge for them to get away with things um, so I I had a strong suspicion, and that's all it is. That's all I've got is a strong uh, suspicion. I can't prove this. I can only say what I've said, uh, which is an honest account of what happened, of that how that accident was covered up, and I believe that those policemen were planted, to and and then the driver was targeted to hit me at that point. So they were waiting. So when I was turning, they had the, the, the you know, they, they target the driver coming up the road next, bang, and then, uh, you know, whatever happened to that driver, that driver admitted liability, couldn't understand what happened, couldn't, you know, said, well, you know, couldn't see me, you know, I don't, I don't know. And uh, I personally, I think that was a, you know, something targeted at them to distract them for like just a few seconds while they're approaching me and it worked and, and they hit me and, and then the accident was covered up and then and then that leaves you a prey you know that leaves you demobilized I was demobilized for a couple of years I was um, damaged vertebrae, damaged uh, neck, damaged throat, damaged back and I still hadn't had any treatments I had to recover just naturally and I've still got um, chronic problems and then I'm not going to get any help in the NHS they've made that quite clear so I'd have to challenge it legally and then they fight over the insurance they throw all dirty insurance tricks at you 
to, ma to, to make it an uphill climb. So that's one of the things I wanted to c uh, cover and I believe that was one of the methods that, uh, that they utilise uh, on targets. And I was a target because I challenged uh, a corrupt uh, criminal organisation, a big one, the Mormon Church, and they don't like it. So they get rid of you. And they do it by whatever method, through the Masonic craft, through the police, through the little shadow players and pieces that they can utilise in any community. Um, even in neighbourhoods, uh, you know, uh, they can plant people around your neighbourhood and uh, to psychologically just mess around with you, you know, to do, do anomalies so you, just to muck your head in as a psychological, uh, uh, you know, to to wind you up and then aggravate you and then until you crack or react to it in a unreasonable way. And then, and then you're just left like looking isolated in a in a nutcase. Um, so, a car accident was the main thing really I wanted to cover, uh, and one of the methods that they they can reach you. Um, yeah, I wanted to something I was investigating is. Uh, I was looking, to, you know, just looking for answers in other areas of my life, and I come across uh, something called the Tavistock Institute and uh, the eugenicists behind it, the founding, the, f the founders of the idea of the NHS, how to get all all the care into all the care of people into one unit. So they've they've got births, deaths, everything. They got they got all everybody goes to them. And then they they have the underpinning uh, foundation to be able to access the uh, the people that they're monitoring and they're mapping and they're keeping an eye on generationally, and this is a generational eugenics project, and that's and if you do your research, that's what is underpinning the NHS system, and then the good people who believe it's a good idea and right are the ones who build it up but they're building it on the foundation of the people who established the idea and they've always got access from the start because they're the founders of it so they have an involvement in it from the beginning and so do their families after that so all that information is correlated and this is where they target people this is how they reach people through their avenues through the Freemasonry you go into any hospital you look at a lot of the donations I mean my local hospital all the, some of the donations that have been done by the charities are uh, like pictures and they're like they're Masonic, they've got Masonic patterns in it and uh, all that order. So a lot of the people who invest money in hospital wings, uh, things like that, are like Masons and, and they're dark and you, you don't know what their involvement is, is with it, but they have an avenue into that care system because they, they have a invested interest and they're charitable donate you know they make charitable donations so people favor them people give them favor and uh, something I discovered and um, I've also seen um, you know the abuse of care in hospitals and how it's covered up how easy it is to do and get other people to do it for you and, and not pass over hand, hand over shifts, not not follow up on what should be following up, and just leave it and ignore it, and it goes on on a daily basis, and it, it it's covered up. Um, I'm not going to go into that, uh, but I wanted to cover the uh, the methodology um, and how they place people and and the methods that they do that. So that can be any avenue they can potentially get access. So if you're a target and uh, you come across this nest of people, you have to realise it's a big organisation and it's to do with Freemasonry, leadership positions, having key people in key positions to be able to call upon uh, and so this evil can have access to wherever their target is appearing. If it's somewhere where they can go, like charities, um, Citizens Advice Bureau is a charity. It's owned. It's a charity. It's by 
uh, a group of charities that um, you know pay money and then it's run by volunteers and uh, people go there with all their problems and it's, uh, and it's all, all their, all their uh, confidential information is locked in the safe well so you believe but these shareholders have an invested interest in it and they can turn up and take that information out of the, sh the safe and photocopy it now I, I happen to be homeless and I was um, just sleeping around the area in, in the town and there was a citizen's advice which was directly facing me, or, you know, opposite me. And it was about four or three in the morning and I saw the light come on. A car turned up in the car park, the light went on, they went straight up to the stairs. And bearing in mind I'd been in that in that same building about a week previous, two weeks previous, uh, trying you know, trying to find some get some help for some accommodation some advice about uh, my you know, some accommodation and places to go and I knew I could see the upstairs all, all the windows are quite big and open so I could see the little room where the safe was because I'd actually um, had an interview with someone and they kept my record on the safe and locked it in that safe so I saw somebody three o'clock in the morning come in run up the stairs, put the lights on, go into the room with a safe, go into a room where there's a photocopier, go back to the room with a safe, shut the door, go down the stairs, get in the car and drive off. And I, 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 I thought to myself, I know that's the that's the room with the safe in, what are people aware that's going on? Was that was that a legitimate thing or was that um somebody getting heads up on what information is being given to these people at Citizens of Advice, which is a charity. Who are these charity? And this is the point I'm getting at. You don't look behind the scenes who, who are the shareholders. Who are the shareholders of all the FA football clubs? Well, they're rich people who, who own these little toys to, for sport. Uh, they're not owned by the, the clubs. They're invite, they're, that a lot of the people are, are lawfully allowed to remain and choose to remain anonymous. So you, it's none of your business who owns it. You, you know, it's a it's a bit like that. And it's same. It's the same in hospitals and a lot of NHS care systems are charity run organisations. And you don't see the charity organisation behind it. You just see, oh, it's all charity. It's all good. And you've got good people in there, but you've also got evil people in there, working under the machination of the ch the setup, which is the the charity. Uh, you know, um, and that goes on in certain places. Uh, so, all these um, this nest is uh, utilised through the free Freemasons, through the Illuminati, all those secret societies, um, all the police are all, all the top officers of the, uh, of the police force are, are Mason, the whole police force is Freemasonic and uh, the way it's ordered and run. Um, so all these avenues are potentially corruptible, potentially you can put anyone in there, you can say you're a, you know, you could be a psychopath and pass a, a grievance counselling or a you know, you could be a paedophile and get to work with children if you're, if you, if you know, you're one of those people who will say anything and, and believe it and convince people that you're telling the truth. Uh, so any any avenue is potentially corruptible, whether that's doctors, whether that's uh, police, whether that's wherever any any service, uh, any public service body is. Uh, Easily, t it can easily be controlled and dominated and managed, and things can happen under the noses that the people work there, like the NHS, for in instance. It's all from the top, and orders come down the line, and people can't question what their boss says, so they just do things. And if they're asked to do something that they don't think is quite right, it's easy to put pressure on that person to suggest, well, if you don't do it, we'll get somebody else to do it. So people are expendable. And people who are compromised don't always speak up a bit about it. They just shut up, and it's it, it, the practice continues under people's noses. 
So I've experienced this in many, many, many avenues when I've been targeted and they're trying to get at you through or get through people to get at you to stop something happening, stop the stop you getting the help you need. And that's all interlinked with targeting. So that's any any area where you're touching on their toes, you're treading on their toes, you're going to experience this. Whether you're online, you're going to get trolls, you're going to get spies, you, you'll get attacks on your website, your computer, you'll get hacks. You'll get all sorts of things done thrown at you when you're a target and when you cross the tread on the toes of these people because they're, they're powerful people and they've been doing this generationally and they employ people that they throw away, they, they can care less about people because it's a, it's, it, it works on, the, on, on deception and a, and a false illusion because people wouldn't do it unless they want to do it or unless they've been compromised to be doing it and you can't always tell the difference you, you don't know what, what's in these people's minds and hearts and why they do it are they employed? Are they, you know, are they part of it? Or are they compromised and employed by the bigger people who get other people to do it that are expendable? Or are they people that are, are more from it, organised and specialised in it? And then, you know, they, they work on the target rather than get other people to work on the target. Because a lot of these perps are trained by experts. So, and there's different, different methods different approaches and different qualities of, of how good your service is, how good your targeting is, how psychologically perfect it is, you know, or how crude and rubbish it is and how, you know, it, disappointing it is when you, not for me, but for them, when, it, when, uh, when it's easy to spot and when they do silly mistakes that, that stand out like, you know, trying to creep through a a building without being noticed and smashing symbols and things like that it's, it's clumsy and it's crude but other times it's really clinical and these people are disciplined and they, they play the long game they play the long psych psychological game the housing state I live in is uh, it's not owned by our government it's a private estate that was set up in the name of a charity and so potentially that they can own the homes a, a, a certain amount of homes on the estate so they can from the top down put people where they want to and I've seen locally how people come and go without any any for sale signs any advertising of rent or anything it's just like someone one person's there one minute one people's a different person's there the next minute and so and then people associate you know that there's a relationship with other people that happens overnight which is very strange you just move into an area and then suddenly you know other, everyone you know you know people all around you that might be possible but it, it's unlikely um you know walking in and out of the houses freely uh so you 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 get to spot these things um you get to sp uh you get tells on what's going around you and if you're if you're patient you can start to pick up a picture if you can have any contact with these people you can usually get a clue because they would like to let let you know that they're what they're doing but they won't they would it, it would be really subtle um i've spoken to i suspect some of my perks and i've been given contradict contradictory information i've been something was confirmed i knew that was a lie and they knew it was a lie and they wanted to me to know it was a lie and so that was a tell for me to set, to know that, that that person had deliberately lied to me and they knew that I knew that they were lying and that's like a little psychological there you go that's to do your head in and, some, and, and that attached I could attach that lie to someone else's taking part in the activity, I'm not going to say what that activity is, but it was a lie and it had two people involved in separate houses and they weren't, a, they're not, it, to look on the face of it in the public, these 
these two bodies aren't associated but in 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 the psychological attack at me they are associated but to the public they're not so I worked out that they were like one was lying so that confirmed that the two people knew that they were associated with each other and they they wanted me to know that and that was just simply by asking you know a conversation and it slipped out so I could discover that they were lying and then put the pieces together and then of course they realized after that that I'd figured it out so um, if you are if you've got perks like camped up around you um, I was saying earlier that it the power of it is your reaction to it and the, I've seen these people come and go because once you rumble them it, it, it's usually a case of waiting to the it, it's like it's failed because it, it loses its edge so they have to replace the people doing it because it's got they got to start afresh again and then the psychological because it because it's a long game and they play this long game. They try, and if a method fails, they will come up with a new method, and then they will continue working on it until it, until they get a desired re effect. And uh, I, I've I've realised that that um, from being on the end of it and, and and discerning the changes and and the aggravation and the different methods and changing like one minute it's voices and targeting and you know uh, gang stalking and then that stops and it's a bit more psychological and uh, playing noises heating you up sounds things like that just to wind you up and then trying to aggravate your mood trigger moods catch you in a weak moment they know you're volatile and they try and aggravate that moment wait till you're vulnerable throw something in the situation which triggers that and they will keep playing on that, they keep working on any weakness and weakness until you crack. And the devil does that as well. And if you're a spiritual person, you can see when it's it, it it's a demonic attack, but it's got it's got some human uh, um, catalyst in it as well that's working that same spirit that that. Um, that evil spirit, that evil intention. So it can be a demonic oppression, but it's also with uh, physical bodies involved um, who are serving this demonic, this de de demonic desire, this demonic intention, this um, morally bankrupt, bankrupt intention against the person for no reason other than somebody's upset them and they've been employed to deal with it so they're not going to ask questions because they're that sort of character so all these people are connected and, that, and these people can get to schools they can get to hospitals they can get to doctors lawyers that it the world is one big club and it's been joining up over the years and that's been done through the infiltration of freemasonry and the establishment of uh, these family lines who dominate and get their people in and when you come across the hashtag nest you're gonna meet one of their methods and you're gonna encounter someone going here's a tick job ticket and it would go down the line and it would be for this person and they they go right let's put this group of tar perps on them oh that didn't work let's put this group of perps on them so all it's a chain of command and these perps have to go by orders they can't freely act on their own because a lot of them would just, you know, would want to kill you or or maim you. They they're disciplined. They're very disciplined. These people, military precision and discipline. They will wait till the early hours of the morning before they do it. Before they start their targeting. And they wait. They wait patiently and patiently and patiently until they can, you know trip you up and that, you know that's their that's their little ego and you've got to beat that you've got to stand against that and fits and, and and say no you're not beating me i've already won because that's the way they play they've already won well no i've already won 
because I, I've, I've decided I've won. You're not gonna, you're not having that over me, and that's a psychological battle. And it's like that with uh, remote neural monitoring. As soon as you think you're powerless, you've lost. So you've got to take the victory over it, and it will lose its hold. It, it won't have power over you if you don't allow it to. It might try and force and dominate you and hold a gun to your head. You don't have to, you, you you can take the bullet if you want to. You don't have to allow it to to have power over you. And then you'll see that it can't have power over you and it's crude and let it go away. Because it 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 has to work on you allowing it to work. And it's the same with targeting. It has to. It only works because it's effective. If it loses its effect, they change the method. And this is what they're learning. You see, it's a test program. So they're testing on hard people like us, who can take it and are resisting it. So for the next people coming up the road, they're going to get a bit more roiled. And these people aren't going to stand a chance because technology's evolving. The uh, reports of these are getting squashed, like the reports of all the other things, the paedophile rings, the corruption in the police, the corruption all throughout society. It's getting washed. The media washes all truth. Um, if you're a activist, you've got anything to say online, you'll be getting hacks, you'll be getting your uh, figures slashed, you will get pe people slowing you down you, you'll be uploading a video and it'll be getting knocked off and you have to start again you might have to go through that ten times before you succeed because they want you to give up they want to wear you down and they will try all these little methods and they'll pull people up and you'll have people approaching you like they're your friends and then um, psychologically undermining you you know just throwing a little anomalies in there to get you to under, undermine your psychological, tr um, you know, uh, trust and well-being. So you have to be quite discerning. And if you haven't, if you haven't got um, the Lord, if you haven't got Christ, you 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 are out of your depth completely. And you haven't got that understanding to turn to. You haven't got that. You haven't got God's perspective to view these things and measure these things and to stand against these things um, it's a hopeless situation that's getting more and more and more hopeless and more and more and more brazen and uh, I'm trying to help people understand that not just understand the targeting but understand the scale of the organization of the people that utilize this targeting targeting and why it's used to utilized and who utilizes it it could be many groups rent rent some fugs rent a fug so if this service is known about on the underworld oh just get get you know if you're a a counsellor or you're someone of importance and you've got some people you don't like and you know you know a few mason friends oh you know that uh, targeting you're on about you know you couldn't get me hooked up could you yeah of course we could brother you know you, here's the guy you know give them their name and they'll be on the list and they'll be you know we'll be pulling money out of our slush fund and budgeting it and they'll be off and targeting these people um, it's a dog. It is a dog eat dog world. These are, we're living in an evil world of evil people who lie. And I'm not saying that all people are evil and liars. There's, there's a lot of good conscientious people, but these evil people work amongst those conscientious people, and they can uh, bend the rules to their favour. So once they've got enough people in there, they can turn it. Over, they can turn any decision over, and they can turn. They can crudely steer it which they want which way they want it to go by prevent it from happening uh, so you need to be aware of that if you're a target um, it's, it's a big picture to figure out and it's um, very deep and frightening and these people are uh, Luciferian Satanists and then they recruit other people up who aren't aware of, of who they are being recruited by they're just given this privilege to be in this secret body of dominance and they think they're special 
but they're all blinkered. They don't see what's going on around them. They don't see what's above them, what's going on up in the next level. And it's the same in the next level. They don't see what's going up above there. And that's how it works, through the layers of ignorance. And the people at the top can manipulate all that ignorance right down to the bottom. They could either jump from the top, start at the top, and come and behave like a beginner at the bottom, and raise all the way up, and, that, and everyone will know that person and go, oh wow, he went all the way up, look, he, he raised all throughout the ranks of Freemasonry, you know. And other people can't. They won't go, up, they, they won't let anyone up in that that they don't want up there because it's controlled from the top. So this is all link, linked to targeting. This is all linked to the shadow underworld this is linked to the shadow military intelligence that's who train these people this is where the techniques come from you know that's how they all, all you, uh, recently we've had those uh, russian spies and how they were poisoned with something to do with putting poison on the doorknob well this is a, a targeted individual methodology um modus operandi you know that they they put poison in your milk or around your glass rims, they you know, break into your house and contaminate your food. Or they're ahead of you in the shop. If you if you've got a supermarket they, they own it. You know, these people uh, are, are big conglomerates that own businesses and get people to run the businesses on their behalf. So it's easy for them to turn up and have access to the managers in those places. Oh, I wouldn't do us a favour. Uh, get that little bloke when he comes in, you know, put something on the shelf in front of him, or get one of your staff members to do it, one of your dark, one of your satanic cult members that works for you. Get him to put some, yeah, we know where he's going, you know, put it in front of him. Uh, these people are like that, they're calculated, and if you know anything about. Uh, secret service op op operatives and how they work this is the sort of thing the CIA do this is the sort of thing MI5 do and these are the people that trained all these perps this is where it comes from because they're the people with all their going back to Tavistock Institute they're all linked you see to this eugenic eugenicist body and it's all all linked into this unit of organised establishment and it correlates people's lives and information and the psycho psychology and it starts mapping people and it tries to start figuring people out and working people so they're getting more powerful and then, they, then supercomputers, they used to have think tanks working out solutions and uh, um, algorithms through uh, logic and getting people to do all the calculations for them you get 20 body think tanks Give them your problem, and then it go through, and they come back with a uh, with the right answer to that solution to that that targeted individual. How do we destroy them? What's the best way? Here's a psycho psychology. Give it to all the think tanks. They come back with the answer. Now that's all done with a computer, and the algorithm. Uh, their mindset's been programmed into the algorithms. They just get a big computer to run it, so they they, they can. There's operators in all. There's a higher chain of command. And there's someone at the top who's orchestrating all the correlation of targets. You know, like manager, supervisor level, manager level, executive level. So it's a, it's a dark organisation that's operational alongside the good operational the establishment or, or, or the false face of the establishment that should be lawful and that does have lawful people in it. But the lawful people in it can't can't possibly see the unlawfulness the shadow side of it and if they do they're going to have a very hard time uh, establishing it and convicting it and th therefore stopping it the only way to stop it was to prevent it in the first place but that's happened a long time ago through losing our morals in this country you know losing our values losing our christian heritage and all that was fought to keep our freedoms they've been all undermined and people are so stupid they don't they don't see what's going on it's all to undermine our freedoms and our law
corrupt our government, give them a bad name, and to you know destroy their credibility and ability to act within Parliament on our behalf. So it gets worse and worse, and the people that get into Parliament become worse, worse and worse people, far away, further away from the problem, and they still don't recognise what the problem is. And if they do, they're, they're too frightened to face it, and that's Roman Catholicism and the powers that be. Uh, Royal Britannia is a domination of the Roman Empire, dominating the lion, because the lion's laying down at her, Britannia's feet. So Britannia isn't Great Britain, it's, it, it's Britain under the rule of the Roman Empire, and that's, that's Vatican City, Rome, that's who owns the city of London. You know, the investors of that all own the investors of Switzerland and all the banks in Switzerland, you know, the neutral zone where they all put their money. So they've got Vatican City, they've got Switzerland, they've got the City of London. You know, that's their, that, that's their reproductive organs, that's their establishment, that's their safe haven to uh, dominate and operate and, and, and access to all the laws through, through money. Through the power of money, you hold the money, you hold the power, and they help. They hold the power, so they hold. They compromise at every nation, and and this is where this is all all we all weaves into targeting. So any walk in your life, you've trod on these people's toes. You you've uh, ruffled their feathers. You're a target, and and you're a target for destruction or experimentation or whatever they on a whim that they choose or it's decided for you so that's a big problem you may be finding yourself in and that's why I'm doing this because your only hope is salvation your only hope is to know Christ because your life might not get any better and, and, and what's life going to be like under this misery with no purpose if you, had a, if you knew the reason and the purpose and you would apply yourself and find out and trust God and call upon him and know him then life will start to make a bit more sense and then you start to figure it out and then you're, the truth will literally set you free Christ will set you free from this and he'll strengthen you and, I, and, and you'll outgrow it and you'll stand up against it and see it, what it what, for what it is and you won't, be in, you won't be frightened of these people or intimidated what they can do or what they can suggest that they're going to do to you whether they kill your dog, or whether they do this, or whether they do that, whatever they think to break you, if you've got Christ, you know that they can't break you from the beginning. You know, they can hurt you, yes. They can make your life a misery, yes. They can't break you, they can't win unless you allow them to win. But if you have no knowledge, what chance do you stand of winning? Or understanding what it is you're fighting to be able to, to know you can beat it? Because you can be right in the thick of it and you've got nobody to turn to, you're in the dark and you've got these sick sickos around you who are well oiled and well practiced at this and then the better the reaction they get the more the more of a kick they get from doing it. So I'm trying to help people that are perhaps caught in it and uh, trapped in trapped in the spotlight of it just to get pick yourself up and you know uh, Take a hold of yourself and take hold us. Take hold of some hope. Take hold of some authority of the situation. Um, so that was really what I wanted. To, all I wanted to cover within the other video. But um, as soon as I finished the video, I thought oh, I needed to mention my car accident because that might have some relevance to somebody. And and everything else I said links on to that. So I'm going to end there. Um, if you're if you're that target having a hard time, I just want to, you know, uh, reach out to you and say, uh, don't give up, don't don't give in to despair or or you know fear or, or panic or or a negative reaction. Uh, you know, it's a narrow way out 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 of this, but you can be delivered. You can be set free from this, but uh, that takes faith and trust in somebody who's stronger than everything, stronger than the situation, bigger than the situation, bigger than you, bigger than anybody, and that's God. And the only way to, to, to know God is through His Son, Jesus Christ. 
and that's really my extent, um, extended invitation on his behalf for you to accept that invitation and be delivered and saved and then move on through, through your circumstances on a much stronger and firmer foundation empowered and resilient to this opposition to this evil because it's because uh, you might you might win a case in court but it's not going to make the problem go away if there's a hundred cases in court it's not going to make the problem go away because the evil is in mankind and it'll always be in mankind and evil always dominates because it's quite prepared to lie and do this sort of thing to get its own way so it's up to good to keep fighting it but good is just dying people are fed up People are losing heart because they, they they can't see any hope of beating this evil. They won't beat this evil because they they don't they, they've rejected God, the author of all good. So if you reject God, your goodness becomes well, un, it, it's like a salty water that loses its saltiness. It's like lemonade, fizzy lemonade loses its fizz; it goes flat. And uh, good people. Uh, wear out good people get um, fed up and it can people could just give up heart and there's a great danger of that we're going through that at the moment people are starting to will start to lose heart start to lose hope especially when this evil keeps continuing and it keeps abounding forward and uh, you don't see many court cases you don't see many victories in the court you just see the same old you know, one or two victories, and then it's all business as usual. There'll be something else to worry about tomorrow. You know, there'll be a new evil on the block, a new a new game that they're playing, or a new thing that's discovered. You know, a new thing comes to light that the world's attention is going to be concerned about. So there's going to be a whole host of things that is going to, you know, wear people down. So I'm going to leave it there and um, just wish you well if, if you're watching this video and. Uh, you know, anyone supporting me, I'd like to thank you. Um, any any brother or sister praying for me, I thank you very much. I appreciate that. And uh, good night and um, every blessing to you.